Welcome and thank you for joining us on this special program. I'm Alicia Fortin. For the past year, I've been researching Gracie's Mission, a nonprofit organization striving to provide the best care for animals. They do this by educating the public, advocating for holistic treatments, and providing grants for owners that cannot afford to treat their animals. In this first piece, founder Margot McWeeny tells me about her journey into the nonprofit and how it all started with her dog, Gracie. What Gracie is giving back now to people and animals is a way for them to get their animals stronger, live longer, and healthier. Talk about a negative turn positive. At four months old, Gracie, a golden hair cocker spaniel, already had bad knees. Several surgeries later, she was diagnosed with hip dysplasia. A doctor recommended painkillers and limiting physical activity. But that wasn't enough for her owner, Margo McQueenie. We took another route and found good dog that helped Gracie become physically stronger with swimming therapy, laser therapy. Soon enough, Gracie was running and jumping around like any other dog her age. Within, I would think, six months, she was a new dog. And right now, everybody knows that holistic is the way to go. It's non-invasive. It's not that expensive, and normally it works. An unrelated tragic accident took Gracie's life in 2007, but Margot turned another negative into a positive for her. She began Gracie's mission. Educating people, telling them what we do, how to do it, and if they can't afford it, we give them a grant that they can go find their practitioner, whatever it might be, if they need swimming therapy, they need acupuncture, Chinese herbs, Reiki, whatever it might be, they feel that their animal would need. Over the years, Gracie's mission has helped animals all over the country by providing funds for treatments. Well, we've helped so many people, we get more people than we have money for. And it's a lot of money going out, a lot of, we've spread ourselves really thin, which is probably not a good thing. But when you get calls saying they're desperate and they have no place to go, you can't turn people down. Margo stresses the organization's need for volunteers to go out and fundraise and educate the public on the proper way to treat their pets. We need to educate children and as they grow learn to have, they have to have good nutrition, the animal has to have good nutrition. They need to be able to have exercise, the animal needs exercise. So whatever they need, the animal needs. And it goes a long way. For more information, you can visit graciesmission.org. Whatever you do, it comes back to you. Here's how the process works. You can visit graciesmission.org and fill out a grant application. From there, you'll discuss who you want to see, and Gracie's Mission will work out a schedule with your provider and funding for your animal. They're, they're just... They're so happy about the, seeing the animals move their bodies where they couldn't. They're, I mean, there's no pressure on their legs. They are actually getting stronger. So week by week, they can see the animal improving. You almost see these animals smile. As Margot stated in our interview, there is a need for volunteers and funding to continue with Gracie's mission. Again, you can visit graciesmission.org for more information. There are many doing their part to help, including the providers we're about to meet. If I call up a holistic person or a, like say the canine joint and they do underwater therapy, acupuncture, different things, they will give me a 50% discount. I mean, how, where do you get that? Nowhere. In this next report, I talk with the owner of the canine joint in Franklin and meet one of the dogs that benefited from Gracie's mission. Wanna say hi? Here we go. Fergus the surfer dude. It doesn't look like it now, but not too long ago, this exercise would have been impossible for Fergus. And he came in not walking. He was actually found on the side of the road, I hate to tell you. A corgi rescue group found the three-year-old Fergus abandoned with a broken back. The doctor had given him a prognosis of maybe a 50-50 chance. It was a long recovery. We have acupuncture and chiropractic and physical therapy, and now he is walking on his own, and we, uh, we love him. He's a wonderful boy. He's pretty much Good boy. Good boy. taken to everybody here. Good boy. Thanks to funds from Gracie's Mission, Fergus is now enjoying his second chance at life. Gracie's Mission, incredible organization. Excellent, excellent. We see, and I've probably seen about 25 of their dogs, and they allow people and rescues to be able to afford therapy. So ready to go swimming again? Here we go. Uh, we try to make it as affordable as possible. Go Fergus! 
Patty Trebu is the owner of the canine joint in Franklin. The clinic seeks to rehabilitate dogs with a variety of conditions, including arthritis, hip dysplasia, disc issues, spine, and knee surgeries. Patty began the canine joint after making the leap from human to animal therapy. I enjoyed it thoroughly, but I've always had a heart for dogs. I've always done therapy with my own dogs. Come on, Gracie girl, we'll speed you up a little more. Patty's dog, Gracie, included. She's 12, and she has a little problem with her right wrist. All right, ready to fill? Ready to fill. Water therapy helps Patty see where canines are having issues. We're going to give her a little assistance. Oh, she's, this is even better than last time. The height and the speed can be adjusted to make the exercise easier or harder. Let's lower the water a little bit, Erica. So you're going to see her get a little sloppy and walking more, but now she has to work her core. As we lowered the water, she doesn't have the water to help her stay straight. You can tell a lot by just watching them walk. If you watch the wrists, she gets nice flexion and extension without the weight bearing. For dogs that refuse the water treadmill, Watch this. Nope. Oh. Water therapy <laughs> takes place in the day. pool to help with range of motion. So we can hold him and make them work a little harder too. And uh, if he's not using one leg, we can give him a little feedback in the foot. And then he pushes with his feet. The dog's reaction is normally if you push against them, they push back. So we got him pushing hard right here. Come on, buddy. Good boy. So what we're seeing as he walks better is more... Um, nerve regeneration, which is what we need. While Fergus looks uh, forward to his time in the pool, other dogs like Sasha would be all too happy to avoid it. She only heads north. But pool therapy is good for the Bernice Mountain Dog, who is recovering from two knee surgeries. Uh, we got good action on those legs. Those knees is the important part. Hi, pretty girl. Oh. This was Kima, a few weeks out of spine surgery. This is our little evaluation room slash massage and range of motion. Here, Kima receives laser treatment, which we'll see later on, and massage therapy. And just to get it a little loose and comfortable, uh, she definitely uses all the muscles in here. We look for trigger points. So the other thing is we check, see what we're getting back for reflexes. There it is. Good. That's annoying, isn't it? From there, it was on to the trampoline for some range of motion work. And you're seeing one of my trade secrets because this is one of my, uh, my little deals of trying to get them to do proprioception work. She's working hard, working real hard right now. She doesn't know it, but... I always feel hopeful. Some are going to progress quicker than others, and it depends on their immune system and the damage in the, in the spine and how uh, persevering the owners are at home. But I've had dogs, some took, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, and I've had other dogs that it took months, so. And it's going to be a good year before they really get everything back. Uh, this is Amber. Amber is a longtime client of Patty's. She had spine surgery, and now her hair's grown back nice, so you don't even know it. After her surgery, she was dragging her legs, rear legs. Uh, to the point that it was just heart wrenching just to see her trying to walk. And uh, when I spoke to the surgeon, he said that uh, we needed to get her into therapy as soon as possible. She just comes back for some laser therapy every so often just to keep tuned up. Basically, the laser in layman's terms is a light that um, shoots in deeply, better than a hot pack or an ultrasound, and brings all the healing properties. You'll hear a beep all the healing properties to the area that I laser. So, in other words, her immune system has healing properties, so the light draws it to the area. And through Amber's long recovery, both she and her owner, Alan, have made a new friend. If it wasn't for Patty, my dog wouldn't be walking. Uh, that's the bottom line. Um, she's done so much for my dog. The odds of her making it this long uh, were very slim. The Canine Joint is one of several canine-geared organizations within Destination Dog, located in Franklin. We're all here for the dogs. It's our, our mission is to help as many dogs as possible. This one-stop shop creates a community of collaboration for practitioners and a family-like environment for their canine companions. 
Taz, happy birthday! For example, Patty works closely with Dr. Cheryl Terratita, the center's chiropractor. Taz has been a patient of Cheryl's for a while. Taz, a retired obedience dog, comes to the canine joint for adjustments. The anatomy is about 80% the same between humans and animals, so you know, they do get the same same issues as the humans and they need just as much help as the humans do. Taz is also here to keep his fitness up. I think it's very important, uh, just like it is for humans. Uh, it's good for before surgery, it's good for after surgery, helps the dog attain independence quicker. Patty's calling is truly a labor of love. She puts in 50 to 60 hours a week and is contemplating whether or not to add home care into the mix. We teach a lot of exercises to the owner so they can follow through at home. She, I mean, really cares for animals and that's her life. It's tough. I, uh, I'm here over 50, 60 hours a week, but um, it doesn't ever seem like it. It's too much fun. Huh. She is even following in the footsteps of Gracie's mission by starting her own nonprofit. We always make the money work. So if it's $300, they get acupuncture, chiropractic, you know, physical therapy, we just discount the money and just make it work. Some people have to decide, do I have to put my dog down because he's not walking anymore? Is there something else that I can do? And that I want to give people hope for because that truly is what, why we're all here, um, is to get as many dogs seen as possible and they don't have to be put down. And uh, a lot of rescues, you know, they're overflowing and some of them just need a little bit of therapy, you know, and just to get back on their feet and then someone will adopt them. You can see more at dogability.org. Patty and all the providers at Destination Dog do such a great service for these animals. You'll see a little more on that at the end of our program. Up next is a holistic treatment Margot is very passionate about, as I learned during our interview. Nobody wants to pick up the animal that's not friendly. They don't know why, I mean, they want the, the dog that's at the front of the cage, not the poor one that's sitting in the back. Why is that one sitting in the back? Find out. After that, I had to learn a little bit more about Reiki and its healing properties. So Margot introduced me to Michelle Lowry. While Gracie's mission offers a lot of financial support, there is much more to the organization, including a major advocacy component. We need to do a Reiki program in shelters that will help animals feel less fearful, less stressed. We can get them in and out of shelters so much faster if they're happy. And there is one woman doing just that, Michelle Lowry, one of Margot's strongest supporters. Margot's an amazing person with a very definite mission on helping people to not only introduce them to alternative therapies, but providing the finances for people um, that can't afford it. She's so passionate about bringing these modalities to people and having them understand that there's many different options to healing your animal now. Michelle leads Reiki programs at shelters in both Maine and New Hampshire. Reiki really recharges the cells of the body so that they can do the healing um, and bring the body back into balance. So it works emotionally, it works physically. It's very subtle. It's just like them gravitating to this person and not to this person. They're feeling the energy of the person and they like this one and they don't like this one for whatever reason. On this particular day, we observed several animals from the NHSPCA shelter. One dog coach didn't take to the therapy and then... It's amazing to watch them. If some animals will gravitate to the Reiki straight away. Um, and some animals like you saw with Coach today that took half an hour to finally go, oh, this kind of feels nice and oh, I can relax and oh, I'm not so scared anymore. Um, and it's just having the patience to just sit and wait. Michelle uses both history of the animals, alternative medicines like oils and gemstones to assist with the Reiki treatment. I offer them to the animals and the animals will gravitate to one thing or another. And sometimes... Every so often I'll get an image or I'll get a sense, or I'll get an emotion, or I'll get a feeling, and I'm learning to work with the dog, and what does that mean? The change has been just incredible, and you just look at these dogs and go, 
oh wow, that was the same dog I started working on, you know, X weeks ago or a couple months ago. A lot of the animals that I work with when I volunteered just my own time with this, um, I don't expect to see them again the next week because most of the time they have a Reiki session, something shifts and they're gone within a few days. Once we can get through that barrier, then we can do the training and the behavior modification end that still needs to happen, but you need to have the animal in that right state of mind and able to produce that feeling. You're providing them with something that they recognize as being safe and loving and there's no agenda to Reiki, you're just simply giving them energy. The program is now running successfully in two shelters, which I'm thrilled about because this is such a deep passion for me and I'm just looking to expand it further into other shelters. It's, it's proving itself to be a really good program. For a shelter, the rewards are endless. One of the reasons that we find animals are surrendered is because of behavior, so it was really important when we built our beautiful new facilities to ensure that we had a behavior and training program, both for the in-house animals, but also for our community's animals to keep them in the home. Volunteers will come to me all the time to say, oh my gosh, what happened? What did you do to this dog? It all of a sudden doesn't pull on leash, or it all of a sudden is friendly and outgoing. What's happened here? And, and that's what the Reiki's done. That's something that previously wasn't part of our training programs that was added in, and that's the only thing that's different that's changed. Um, so we know by those kind of anecdotal stories that we're seeing a huge, huge difference with the animals. Anything that we can do to help the animals um, reduce stress, in, you know, help their behavior, to shine so that they are more adoptable and to be wonderful citizens in our community to and keep the animals in the home, all, all great things. It never fails to fascinate me as to how these dogs respond to this energy. The more I work with the animals, the more I learn how to work with the animals and it's just developed from there over time. We've been tracking what the Reiki been, has been doing and how it's been changing um, the effects of the dogs and making them definitely more adoptable. And it's a rewarding experience for the people involved. Anyone can get trained with it. Um, it's, a, it's a huge self-healing experience as well as what you bring to the animals. Everyone in the room has an experience that will change them in some way, whether they realize it in that moment or not. And so being able to bring this to kids, being able to bring this to the elderly, being able to involve these animals that want to give somebody a second chance of taking them and giving them a good home and allowing these people to experience these changes, it, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. You can learn more about Michelle's practice at NicoNaturalTherapies.com. Our next segment of this special program is a visit up north to Horse and Hound. I'm going to evaluate her and we're going to figure it out. Physical therapy for animals has been an evolving profession or evolving uh, combination of uh, veterinary uh, medicine and the use of physical therapy for rehabilitation. And as that trend continues, human physical therapists are launching their own animal practices. I decided I really wanted to make the leap totally to treating just animals. What I'm doing here is assessing range of motion of her hip. My husband and I did a marketing research as to how many small animal veterinary and large animal veterinarians were in this area and decided we would uh, take the plunge and open a clinic. So they did, opening Horse and Hound in New Hampshire. The work we do here is hugely gratifying. My happiness. I am going to try and see if I can isolate um, the meniscus. We are not only treating the dog but also the owners that are coming here often with their hands clenched and uh, concerned about how their dog's going to do, is their dog able to get better. Owners like John who brought his shepherd Tyra into Horse and Hound for her first visit. Just to get as much of the mobility back. The process starts with an interview and evaluation. In your professional opinion, mm -hmm. it is a torn meniscus. Um, I can't tell you that. Oh, you can't tell? No, me. I can't tell you that. I think your dog has a, a muscle pull here, and she's got significant pain of her knee right at the meniscal area, so it's very possible she could have a meniscal tear. Yeah. Once that is complete, Jennifer provides recommendations. You know well, the other thing I'm going to recommend is that you do consider coming to visit us for oh, a couple yeah. weeks, well, and we get you going on a strengthening yeah. Yeah, program. Like, yeah. You know, if you want to 
Give me two weeks and let's Absolutely. see how things go. The Horse and Hound Clinic has two gym spaces full of equipment to help with gait training, strengthening, and balance exercises. And she had a CCL, a cranial cruciate ligament repair on her uh, right hind. So we're not only getting strengthening focused here on this right hind, but we're also getting core stability through her trunk and shoulders and hips. There's also an underwater treadmill for flexibility, strengthening, and range of motion restoration. The buoyancy of the water alleviates some of the compressive forces down through her limb. There are therapeutic modalities, including laser treatments and ultrasounds. And by bringing the dogs here on a regular basis, they start to slowly see the, the improvement in the dog's function. They start to see the dog get uh, what we call reciprocal gait of that stepping movement. Um, and so overall, most clients here are hugely relieved when they start to see these positive benefits. She's looking pretty good. But there's a lot of other strengthening exercises you can do to help her build more muscle. Than Each just client walking. goes home with a home so exercise like program. Those, Every week that home exercise program is updated so that they need to continue the process and the daily exercise at home is what really makes these that animals it? get better. This is the knee right here. So one hand. hand's above it, yeah. This hand's just gonna be helping back here, but this Take. is really the leg. Now, you're gonna go very slow. Slower is going to be easier on her. While many dogs come to the clinic after surgery, many dogs come to avoid it. There you go. So then when we put the dog into a tripod position, she really has to weight bear on that involved limb. This dog uh, is here for a hind limb injury in that she's got a cruciate tear. Um, and we're trying to see if we can avoid surgery, right? And But she, because the dog had already been through a very traumatic injury uh, from a motor motor car accident where the dog got hit and fractured her elbow and had about five surgeries altogether. so Missy here would really like to not have to put the dog through surgery and so we do uh, something called prehab here for dogs that have oh, what? you're on TV yes um, so what we try and do if, if we want to try to avoid surgery the best we can do is try and strengthen the hind end is another clinic assisting with Gracie's mission. The nonprofit organization helps dogs by providing them with funds for treatments. Gracie's mission approached us at about three months after we opened here. To date, I would say we've had at least six clients that have utilized the, uh, the financial assistance from Gracie's mission to help their dogs get better here. And I would say all of them that have attended and used Gracie's mission uh, financing have gotten the positive results that they came here for that all the dogs got better. And it's not just dogs that Jennifer treats. There are horses, cats, alpacas, sheep, birds. Not that I know each species uh, individually to the nth degree, but taking the principles that we know help humans in the realm of physical therapy, it is very much uh, an advantageous uh, skill set to offer almost any animal and almost any human of giving them some things that they can do at home to help their animal recover. The Horse and Hound Clinic is located at 531 Amherst Street in Nashua, New Hampshire, but stay updated at hnhpt.com to check out their new, larger location in Hollis, opening in May of 2015. More and more veterinarians are realizing the benefit of sending their clients to physical therapy, so they're very much seeing the, the positive benefits of animals that are um, requiring uh, intervention beyond what maybe the veterinarian world can offer them. Finishing up our program today, a special segment about Destination Dog, a one-stop shop for animals in Franklin, Mass. Welcome to Destination Dog. A completely one-stop shop. Uh, you don't have to go anywhere else for anything really, except your vet. We do not have a vet here and we are looking for a vet. Located at Seven Forge Parkway in Franklin, the space includes everything from doggy daycare to training and grooming. And we have um, chiropractic, acupuncture, the big biscuit dog, uh, all natural dog food and treats. Patty Trebu, owner of the canine joint, showed me around the facility. Upon entering, you are welcomed into Happy Tails Doggy Daycare. 
And this isn't your typical daycare. We work by interview, so it's about an hour and a half long, and we take our parents and our dogs out on the play floor. And what we're looking for is to see what is the right compatible group for each individual dog. And we don't do it by size. We do it by your um, play style and your personality. So uh, we have soft players, we have medium players, we have hard players, we have really hard players, we have a puppy group, and then we have a special needs group. And so we figure out which is the right group for you, and then you get an approval to come. You can make reservations whenever you would like. There are also overnights with all the comforts of home. Our overnights are very unique because we have a big bedroom set up. We're not a kennel. We don't do it that way. There's no runs. It's a big bedroom. And we sleep here at night with your dog. So they're comfortable. They're not stressed. And we duplicate what you do at home. And so if your dog sleeps in bed with you, they can sleep in bed with the attendant. If they sleep in a crate in the kitchen, they can sleep in a crate in the kitchen. If they sleep at the end of the bed, we just put a dog bed down there. You're welcome to bring uh, toys and blankets and anything that will make your dog feel comfortable. Uh, stress is really uh, big for dogs as it is for human beings and so everything we do at Happy Tales is to make sure that your dog is comfortable and not stressed and having fun. Up the stairs is Wayward Hound where dogs visit for agility and obedience training. Down the stairs and just across the hall is the Big Biscuit, a bakery with a little something for every pooch, including raw food diets, packaged foods, and... We feature our own store-baked treats over here in this case. Um, so we make everything here in the store. We use all natural ingredients. Um, and then on the opposite side is our deli case, which we get from, it's all like natural chews, natural treats, and it comes from a farm in and she doesn't use any antibiotics or hormones for animals, so it's some great stuff. Destination Dog also hosts many practitioners of holistic treatments. Blue Heron Acupuncture is run by Carol Hetherington. She uses acupuncture, Chinese herbs, and nutritional counseling to promote health and wellness for animals. This is Menace, a 13-year-old mixed breed with a poor appetite caused by food sensitivities and also geriatric orthopedic issues. According to Carol, weekly acupuncture has helped him maintain good digestion, better energy, and has slowed down the progression of age-related hind end weakness. Other patients of Carol have also been treated for arthritis, pulled muscles, and anxiety, among other ailments. Carol also treated Fergus, who was receiving his daily dose of physical therapy at the canine joint during our visit. Good boy. Everything a human can have, the dogs can get. Uh, so we pretty much see it all. It's good for before surgery. It's good for after surgery. Helps the dog, you know, attain independence quicker. Uh, keeps them from compromising and hurting other uh, issues. Patty works closely with Carol Teratita of Chiropractic Healthcare Services. I work on puppies to elderly dogs, and you know, seeing a puppy being adjusted the first time and having them grow up without any issues whatsoever during their lifetime is wonderful. They can uh, not get as many injuries. Um, and then helping the, the elderly dogs who are having issues to see them actually walk out of your office and be more comfortable is, is, is very rewarding. And especially to see the animals who are injured and sick and they can actually move. And after all that, your dog may need a rinse. Look no further than Posh Pooch. Although the practices are different, the practitioners at Destination Dog all share one thing in common, providing the best care for animals. And the beauty of that, the alliance, is that the chiropractor can come over and get a dog during daycare and perform an adjustment. We can bring a dog over to the canine joint to swim. We can, it's just, we all work together for the benefit of the individual dog. So the groomer comes over, gets a dog, they're groomed, they come back to daycare. So we all work together for the benefit of the dog. You can find more information on all these great caretakers at DestinationDogFranklin.com. Well, that does it for our program. I'm so happy you could join us and learn a little bit more about holistic therapy. I know I learned a lot of things myself that I'll be applying to my own dog. For Margo McWeeny, this has fulfilled her life in ways she didn't believe possible. I can't even tell you how it's improved my life, and I'm not even doing anything, you know? 
So yeah, it, it makes me happy that they're happy and they're getting healthy. So I get my rewards by seeing them get theirs. See, and if Gracie had never come into my life and had her issues, she couldn't get back. We couldn't do this. Again, you can visit graciesmission.org to volunteer or donate funds. I'm Alicia Fortin. Thanks for watching.